road to riches or dead end? It's a question that's bound to come up as the auto industry gathers for the opening of the North American International Auto Show in Detroit today. The merger of Daimler Chrysler, a venture launched with much hope and fanfare, is sputtering badly. And there's fear that the maker of the legendary Mercedes may have ended up creating an Edsel. The tale of the merger's downhill run is our Sunday morning cover story. If you go back to the wedding day, the day in May of 1998, when Chrysler and Daimler-Benz said, I do, it was all champagne and promises. The companies are a perfect fit. Somebody said a marriage in heaven. It was a royal wedding, the union of the three-pointed and five-pointed stars. Daimler-Benz, the crown jewel of German industry, the company named for the two men who invented the automobile. And Chrysler, the scrappy American car maker which rode the Plymouth to prominence. Chrysler creates a hot new laser. After defying death in 1980 and again in 1990, Chrysler had become the hottest and most profitable car company of the past decade. Together, Daimler's charismatic chairman, Jürgen Schrempf, pledged they would change the industry. Today, we are creating the world's leading automotive company for the 21st century, Daimler Chrysler Aktiengesellschaft. But two and a half years later, the merger has become a loveless marriage, and Chrysler's new president admits the company is in crisis. We are in quite some serious trouble, there's no question. How serious? In the last half of last year, Chrysler lost one and a half billion dollars. The stock has plummeted, and shareholders are in open revolt. We were deceived, totally deceived. He misled us and everyone else, and he was extraordinarily articulate in doing it. We are combining the two most innovative car companies in the world. So what has happened to the happy marriage? To what degree did, did Chrysler people get along with Daimler people? On an individual basis, they got along great. I mean, As really president in the new company, Chrysler's Tom Stolkamp was put in charge of integration. The issues that got in the way were cultural and historical in the company. Uh, they invented the car 110 years ago. Chrysler was viewed as the 75-year-old little upstart that came along later. Uh, Chrysler culture was based upon the last 20 years of just being a rebel and being slightly bizarre, and we prided ourselves on being a little bit off the wall in our designs, in our organization, in the way we ran the place. Before the merger, as Chrysler's purchasing chief, Stahlkamp had been part of what came to be called Detroit's dream team. Later, Daimler and Chrysler even fought over what to put on his business card. The Germans had a problem with your title. Right, I was president, and that's not a title that's used in Germany at all. Stahlkamp says his vision for a truly unified Daimler Chrysler did not sit well in Stuttgart either. And I thought we should use this uh, momentous occasion of the biggest merger in history up to that time to form a new company. Uh, and uh, it didn't turn out that way. So did you piss off the Germans? Uh, I think I probably irritated them a little bit. He would last little more than a year as president. Did you get the sense they were always uncomfortable with this title or did they get used to it? I don't think they ever got used to it. Or maybe it was me they never got used to. <laughs> At the end of 1999, Stahlkamp was forced to resign by CEO Bob Eaton. We are leading a new trend. Less than a year later, Stahlkamp's successor was also ousted. And then there were none. At corporate headquarters in Auburn Hills, all of Chrysler's dream team, a dozen executives, are now gone. Resigned, retired, or fired. I don't believe it was a good idea to get into that merger in the first place. Engineering Chief Francois Castang bailed out before the merger. It is not a secret that uh, because of the merger, many American management make a lot of money by exercising their option and so on, and their mind was not 10 years down the road with the future of the company. I think it will also be a merger of exploration. Bob Eaton, who with Shrimp was co-CEO of the new company, 
retired less than two years into the merger and reportedly walked away with upwards of $200 million in options and grants. You believe this crisis was ultimately of Bob Eaton's making? Well, I would not say that, that, specific, that strongly, but when Trump offered the merger to Chrysler, someone had to say, yes, I'm going to marry you, I'm going to give you the company to move to Germany. And this is Bob. Whoever created the mess at Chrysler, it is now up to Dieter Zetsche to clean it up. Zetsche was hurriedly dispatched from Stuttgart by Jürgen Schremp to do damage control. On a cold day in December, that looked like a daunting job. Unfortunately, the weather out there is a little bit reflective of the market condition we are seeing out there, frosty. Zetsche may be an outsider, but he's a highly respected one. An engineer and self-described car guy, he spent more than two decades with Daimler. He ran Mercedes. He also ran the Freightliner truck division in Portland, Oregon. Still behind the glass star on the 24th floor of what was America's third largest auto company, a German is now in charge. You're referred to not as the new head of Chrysler, you're referred to as the new German head of Chrysler. Does that bother you? Again, that's a thing in the press. That's not anything here in this company. They, the people here just don't care. Perhaps, but Zetsche acknowledges Chrysler is in crisis. Were the problems deeper than you expected? Clearly, yes. She wants a Ford door, she wants a Chrysler. The slowdown in the economy hasn't helped, but Chrysler also misread the market. As competition cut into its dominance of minivan and sport utility sales, Chrysler was stuck with excess inventory and had to offer huge incentives to unload unsold vehicles. We'll fix Chrysler and we'll prove to the world that this company is much stronger together than both parts could be either one apart. But fixing Chrysler is only part of the problem. Over and over again, CEOs Schremp and Eaton advertised this union as a merger of equals. But in an October interview with London's Financial Times, Schremp acknowledged it was all a ruse to disguise a Daimler takeover, saying, if I had gone out and said, look, eventually Chrysler will be a division of the Daimler Chrysler Group, everybody would have said, no way we will do a deal like that. I frankly think that this man may technically have committed criminal fraud. Seth Glickenhaus of Glickenhaus & Company in New York has filed a shareholder lawsuit. Billionaire Kirk Kerkorian, the company's largest individual shareholder, has also filed suit. As the stock has plunged from a high of $108 after the merger to $44 today, they've lost billions. More important, says Glickenhaus. If he had revealed the truth, and said, which we want to take over Chrysler completely, he would have had to have paid an extremely substantial premium, perhaps as much as 60, 70 percent above the going price. Those are the damages that we are seeking. Mm -hmm. You were robbed. We were robbed, exactly. With Chrysler reeling and Kerkorian leading a legal challenge, Shrimp knows the clock is ticking. How much time does an executive have in this day and age? If it was in North America, he would have run out of it already. Chrysler has come back from the dead before, of course. Lee Iacocca led the resurrection in the 1980s. The Dream Team saved it in the 90s. Can Dieter Zetsche perform the same miracle? Your job is to fix Chrysler, but do you feel that the success of this merger is now on your back? Well, this is a way to put that, which what uh, might scare you. <laughs> um, Does it scare you? That's not the feeling I'm having. But Jürgen Schrempf's marriage made in heaven has become hell on wheels. Now it's up to his best man to save the union, to save Chrysler, and perhaps to save Schrempf's own job. <laughs>